guys, Brian Stevens here with the National Real Estate Posts. How is everybody doing today? Kind of wanted to share this moment here because as we've probably heard by now, NAR, the National Association of Realtors, and Keller Williams uh, were just found guilty in their class action lawsuit in Missouri and ordered to pay $1.78 billion. Uh, this is absolutely unbelievably catastrophic for NAR. Uh, and I talked about this a couple of weeks ago. I said that NAR is going to have their, their greatest financial days are behind them. That is a foregone conclusion. That conclusion was reached when Redfin, all the Realogy brands, and Remax decided that you no longer have to be a member of the National Association of Realtors in order to hang your sales license as a real estate agent with those companies and all of those brands. I think it came out to over 300,000 real estate agents who no longer had to pay their dues. Agents right now who are cash strapped, cash poor, having a hard time as it is, no longer have to pay dues to an association that frankly, many agents don't feel represents their best interest. So that alone was going to be a, 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 just a massive, massive blow to the National Association of Realtors. No longer are they going to be able to charge these enormous amounts of money at their annual retreats that they have generally down San Diego, Orlando, and Chicago. That ship has sailed. What I did say though, is the National Association of Realtors could have their mo most ethical days in front of them if they chose to take a different path than what they've done for the past I don't know, a few decades. Now, if you're watching this right now, I want to let you know that you can jump on. You can jump on right now by going to Mortgage Shop Talk. Go to MortgageShopTalk.com. Go to MortgageShopTalk.com and jump on my Zoom with me and you could be a part of this cast that we're doing right now. Uh, but this just in, like I said, a couple of minutes ago, we saw that the National Association of Realtors and Keller Williams in particular are going to have to pay $1.78 billion. This is to settle a class action lawsuit that's taking place in the state of Missouri. And this class action lawsuit, the Seitzer or the Sitzer case, however it's pronounced, is a accusing real estate brokerages and the National Association of Realtors via their multiple listing systems of colluding to keep commissions artificially high. That would be having a seller pay a buyer side commission on a transaction. And the interesting part is the plaintiffs in this case actually said to keep commissions at 6%, which I find very peculiar because real estate commissions are not at 6%. They don't average 6%. They have an average 6%. That is factually inaccurate. Yet they were found guilty today. Just an absolute, just landscape changer in real estate taking place right now. Unbelievable. Now, I'll tell you, there are benefactors of this. If you watch my show, The National Real Estate Post or Mortgage Shots, you'll know what I'm talking about here. But there are, there are very certainly victors in this case. Well, what do you mean? Who's, who's the winner? The winner is not the plaintiff or the plaintiffs who signed to get on board of this class action lawsuit. I've done the math on this whole thing already. If we were to look at the $51 million that Remax had settled for it in order to get out of this case, which by the way is looking like a damn bargain right now, $51 million that Remax was paying based on their ability to pay, not what the case thought they should be found guilty of and otherwise should have paid. They don't have enough money to pay what they were looking for in this case. But 51 billion for Remax right now is looking like kind of a bargain, isn't it? Now, NAR should be able to pay the 1.78 billion. They're gonna split it with Keller. I gotta imagine Gary's sitting on quite a bit of money himself. But there are victors. If if the 1.78 million dollars in the 51 million the Remax paid goes to everybody in this case in the state of Missouri, each person, after the lawyers take their 30%, after they're paying taxes on it, after all of the legal fees, after the people who actually brought the case, not everyone who signed up for the class action, but those who actually brought the case get paid. Your average schlep rock who bought a house from a Keller agent and or an agent who was participating with the National Association of Realtors, they're going to get a check for dollars, not hundreds of dollars, but dollars. The only ones who make out in this lawsuit are going to be the attorneys who brought the case against NAR and Keller. And the other ones are going to be the fintech companies who are going to fill the void that is being created by a newly minted vacancy of real estate agents. So we smear and slander the name and the reputation of real estate agents through this lawsuit. We charge an enormous amount of money, just, just, a, just a, a prohibitive amount of money to Keller Williams, which is going to stunt them unbelievably. What how many agents are going to leave Keller Williams as a result of this? I don't know. I don't know if any will. They shouldn't. Gary was right. The National Association of Realtors. How many other agents are now going to leave NAR? Has NAR become that pariah as a result of this? NAR has been a pariah in my eyes in a long time. If NAR would have done what NAR should have done over a decade ago, NAR would never find themselves in this situation. But NAR, the National Association of Realtors, created this environment that allowed these type of lawsuits to go forward. They did nothing to protect the integrity of the real estate agent or the real estate broker. Absolutely nothing 
nothing of consequence. In fact, you can make an argument that NAR worked against the agent and the broker with the action they've taken over the past decade. Why did they sell Realtor.com? Why would NAR do that? Selling it to a four profit media conglomerate where NAR didn't even keep a person on the board so they could have a say in how a media conglomerate was going to use the reputational name Realtor for their own personal game. Not for the Realtor's reputation, maybe in spite of the Realtor's reputation, but they sold that and didn't even keep a person on the board. Why? Does it hurt your feelings as a real estate agent right now? As a member, as a paying member of the National Association of Realtors? Is it, com is it coming to terms to you right now that they just didn't give a SHIT about you? This is unbelievable. But this lawsuit is ridiculous. No are almost actually threw in the hat on this when they said, you know what? You don't have to offer a buyer side commission in order to be a member of one of our multiple listing systems that we have um, uh, at least a little oversight with. You don't you don't have to do any of that. No, when they did that, when NAR did that, what they did is they basically said, oh, we're not feeling really good about our situation right now. So we're going to do what we always do. And we are going to take the path of least resistance. We are not going to take, we are going to take the high road on this. We are not going to take the road less traveled. We are not going to take the difficult road. We are not going Going to take the ethical road and do what we've what we should have been doing for the past couple of decades and that is protecting reputationally the role of real estate agents and what they do you should have been screaming at the top of your lungs that if you work with a traditional real estate agent that the cost associated with that sale and the proceeds gained from that sale are going to be greater than what the alternatives are that are being bantered around about right now those being the fintech alternative working with a local real estate agent will actually net you more money on average than working with the open doors or when they were doing it, Zilla or the offer pads of the world. And by working with a local real estate agent, you keep your checks and balances in place. That protects the buyer and the seller. You'll lose that with the alternative. But boy, the alternative is happy right now, aren't they? Open door is doing backflips. Open door preemptively already knew this was coming and said, oh, you don't need a buyer, uh, a, a buyer, uh, excuse me, an agent to represent you if you're buying a property anymore. You don't need that. All you have to do is come to open door. You don't need that anymore. Save the money, save the hassle, come to open door. You don't need representation to protect your interest. Please, by the way, don't have rep representation to protect your interest because we are here to violate your interest. Yeah, don't get protection with a realtor. Just come straight to us and save the hassle and save the money. Just don't read the fine print, people because it's going to cost you. That's who's going to fill the void. This insidious, parasitic nature of the alternative that's out there, preying on the facts that we in real estate and lending all believe that technology as an entity in and of itself makes everything better, faster, and cheaper, and it does not. Not in the case of real estate. Listen, I'm just not just spouting off right now. I'm not st I'm not saying this because I have a dog in the fight. I am not a real estate agent. This I, I do this for a living. I talk about this stuff for a living. I look at it a lot for a living, but I don't have a dog in the fight when it comes to real estate agents or real estate brokerages. I've already come out and said that these big brokerages out there, that they're primed for a fall. And I think we're going to see other real estate brokerages, some of the small ones, come in and just take market share. This is just going to expedite that whole process. But we have seen this before with the fintech companies. We've already seen it. We know what's coming. This happened right before COVID. When the fintech companies were running fast and loose with the rules, the laws, and the regulations that govern everybody in real estate lending. Where they actually changed the rules to make things easier for technology-based real estate firms. The Office of Innovation started in the state of Arizona. Went so swimmingly well that the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau decided to pick this whole thing up and run with it. Remember that when FinTech was the open doors and the offer pets and the Zillas of the world were taking massive market share? After all, it makes perfect sense. Their technology, it must be better, faster, and cheaper, right? Their technology, they're, they're the future. It must be better. Never mind the fact that they've all got boards, they're all publicly traded, and they are highly, highly capitalized. And the people who capitalized all these FinTech companies, they didn't give billions of dollars to them to lose money. Did that ever dawn on anyone? They didn't give the billions of dollars because they wanted to lose money. Uh-uh. The people on Wall Street who gave the billions of dollars to these fintech firms said, we found a way to squeeze the real estate agents out of this whole process. And because we can rely on people's biases, inherent biases, that we're going to do good by them, we can really double screw them. We saw this. We've already seen it. What happened with Zillow? Their algorithm, which couldn't fail, failed and they had to get out of the business and write checks to the tune of $500 million or some crazy number to get out of all their bad real estate dealings that they did. Remember that? I do. They got out of those transactions because 
they screwed the pooch. They just very, very arrogantly walked into real estate as a technology company and said, because we are technology first, this real estate thing's going to be a walk in the park. And it wasn't. Something Saw the same thing with Open Door too, didn't we? What happened when COVID hit and we had the offer pads and Open Doors of the world? They broke contracts and they ran. Why did they run? They ran because they were fearful of the future of real estate and getting stuck in a bunch of contracts on properties that were going to cost them money that they could ill afford. After all, the people who are backing them that make them highly capitalized, they want profits. And those running open door have a fiduciary, a legal and moral obligation to make them all that money. So these contracts with your neighbors, with your friends, with people in your community that you would otherwise represent, if they were going to lose money on those contracts or if they were fearful of losing money on those contracts, they were going to find a way to get out of them because because they don't give two shits about the people who are selling homes. This has nothing to do with people. This has everything to do with profits. They're the ones who are happy about this lawsuit. Why? Because they're back. They're back in a big way. And if they could just, this is the political cycle right now. We know this. Listen, if I'm running for office, it's not about me telling you how great I am. I'm just going to tell you how shitty the other guy is. Vote for me, not because I'm a good candidate. Vote for me because that other guy over there is even worse than me. In the spirit of politicking, during this election cycle that we find ourselves in right now, I want you to think about this. Who is truly going to benefit from this lawsuit? It's going to be the lawyers who are going to make a boatload of money. They don't give a shit about anybody. It's not going to be the people who were harmed. It certainly isn't going to be the real estate community. We slander the name of real estate agents and brokerages out there. If we do that enough, people are going to start to look for alternatives to a real estate agent. Who is going to fill the void that was vacated by a traditional real estate agent if and when that day takes place? It's going to be the same fintech companies who ran for the hills just a few short years ago. Kind of makes you wonder if they're behind this, don't you think? Kind of makes you wonder if they're behind this. It's really interesting. Do you guys remember Internet Explorer? Remember uh, Internet? Who was a uh, who was the search engine before Internet Explorer? Anyways, the Internet Explorer. They Microsoft wanted to get Internet Explorer on everything. They tried to buy the competition. Do you remember that? Couldn't work. Didn't work. They weren't selling. So what did Internet Explorer do? They went and made sure that Explorer was on every single computer in the company. They took their money and they saturated the industry. They were found guilty in a lawsuit. Microsoft was, but at that point, Explorer was too entrenched. The competition was smeared out. Microsoft had to pay a massive, massive fine, but in paying that fine, they killed their competition and they won the battle. Excuse me, they won the war. They lost the battle, but they won the war and Explorer was everywhere. Remember that? What about the one when uh, Facebook wanted to buy Snapchat? Snapchat wouldn't sell. What do they do? They went out there and they got Instagram and they smeared the living you know what out of Snapchat. A huge cost to them, but they killed the competition. They lost the battle. They won the war. YouTube, when they were purchased by Google, they were the ones who were behind the lawsuits and the the punitive oversight, uh, the, the oppressive regulatory oversight on copyright infringement. YouTube was a copyright infringement built site. YouTube was behind it. Why would they do that? Well, it killed the competition. They survived. They lost the battle. They won the war. Facebook brought a lawsuit against themselves early on in the game. Why did they do that? Well, you don't hear about MySpace anymore, do you? They lost the battle, but they won the war. FinTech companies, the same backers of everything I just told you, the same backers, the same mindset. They took a run at real estate agents. And by the way, we're smearing real estate agents, smearing them using all of their data, using their multiple listing systems, using their associations, both state, local, and federal, gov or national, with the National Association of Realtors, actually parasitically became a part of it. And still, realtors did nothing, did nothing about this. Absolutely nothing. In fact, a lot of your state associations said, well, now that the Zillas of the world are part of the National Association of Realtors and part of our boards, let's make sure that we don't say anything bad about them. Uh, how about honest? Can we say something honest about them? Well, maybe don't do that because that might be misconstrued as bad and that wouldn't be good. All the while, they were just taking your ass out to the shed and beating you to a pulp. They actually became a part of your associations and just kicked your ass and you did nothing about it. It's just shocking. Nor should have been screaming at the roof what real estate agents do, and yet they didn't. Now, as I said when I started this whole thing, Nar's best financial days are behind them. They're just way the hell in the rearview mirror. They're behind them. Long gone, I wouldn't even worry about trying to find more money right now. If I was running Nar, I would look at my just beat and battered reputation and say, what can I do? to restore people's faith in this faith in this association it has nothing to do with money. You know, if NAR is going to go down, and you probably will at this point, frankly, you shouldn't. But if NAR is going to go down, here's what you should do. Go down fighting, doing the right thing. Do not go down fighting, trying to save your ass at all cost. Go down fighting, doing the right thing. Try to salvage your reputation by 
finally defending real estate agents and what they do. Don't run from this lawsuit. Don't settle for this lawsuit. I don't think you can. But what I would do is I would appeal this thing and I would get mean and I would scream from the mountaintops exactly what Gary Keller was talking about when he was deposed a couple of days ago. I would scream that from the mountaintop. I find it interesting how the, the lawyer who's deposing me right now is going to take 30% of the settlement and you're getting pissed off at me because you think I charge six, which I don't. Huh, this is a little odd. Hey, by the way, who's behind this? This is the conversation I would have as an art. You're, like I said, monetarily, you guys are screwed. Reputationally, you're screwed too, but you might be able to salvage something there if you finally do the right thing. And then who knows what the future holds for you. But as it stands right now, man, you got exactly what you deserved. Not Keller. At least Gary fought. Anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below if anybody's actually going to watch this. That would be awesome. Um, but there you have it. Guilty. Guilty.